He's played both the suave and the sinister. Sometimes both at once. Don't take this personally, it's business. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Daniel Craig performances. Well, I'm honored. For this list, we're taking a look at those performances that show off this actor at his finest and or most memorable. Hire me or fire me. It's entirely up to you. Number 10, Lord Asriel, The Golden Compass. Lord Asriel? Good morning, Hunt. Starting off our list is a relatively minor role for Daniel Craig from the 2007 movie adaptation of Philip Pullman's best-selling fantasy novel. And even some where there is no magisterium and no authority. Portraying the distant yet determined Lord Asriel, Craig stood out as a key character in the all-governing religious power of the magisterium. His screen time may have been short, but he's got an important connection to the lead, which ensured that he left an impact on moviegoers and critics alike. I wouldn't recommend the Tokai gentleman. It's cult. Number nine, Jake Lonergan, Cowboys and Aliens. There is something you know about me, lady. A small town of cattle wranglers taking on beings from outer space? It sounds like a silly premise, doesn't it? Demons took your goal. When you get to hell, you can ask for it back. Luckily, this sci-fi western has the star power of Daniel Craig and Harrison Ford to breathe life into the comic book concept. You aren't gonna leave without saying goodbye, were you? I'm a wanted man. Well, I could have sworn I saw Jake Lonergan die in those caves, didn't you, Sheriff? As an amnesiac outlaw with an alien weapon strapped to his wrist, Craig showed that he was not only still proficient with an American accent, but he could easily slide into the role of the John Wayne archetype. I've been shot. Only two kinds of men get shot, criminals and victims. Well, which one are you? I don't know. Number eight, Steve Munich. Don't f with the Jews. When making a film about the aftermath of the Munich massacre, you know you're gonna need a stellar cast to do justice to the telling of such a chilling historical event. Think of yourself as something else then. A soldier in a war. I mean, you know how to, to shoot, to assassinate people, right? Even as part of an ensemble cast, Craig managed to stand out as Steve, a South African driver turned assassin whose vocal desire for vengeance in the name of the Jewish people was a sight to behold. Because the only blood that matters to me is Jewish blood. As far as political thrillers go, Munich is certainly one of the most poignant, and Craig had a hand in making that happen. Uh, look at the waistline bulge on that guy. Look at that. I think he might be armed, eh? Number seven, Ivan Ivanovich Sakharin, The Adventures of Tintin, The Secret of the Unicorn. Oh, I am tired of your games. The scroll from the unicorn, a piece of paper like this. Craig's second outing with Steven Spielberg landed him as the antagonist in this beautifully crafted motion capture epic. How could you let them escape? Find them. As the descendant of the legendary pirate Red Rackham, whom he also plays, Craig gets to let loose as the man with a taste for wealthy collections and a penchant for attempted murder. You think it's an accident that I chose Haddock's ship, Haddock's crew, Haddock's treacherous first mate? Nothing is an accident. Playing the nemesis to the king of motion capture, Andy Serkis' Captain Haddock, Craig lends his voice and frame to the maniacal, yet oh-so-entertaining villain. That's right. Why don't you have a drink? That's all you've got left, isn't it? Everything that was rightfully yours is now mine. Number six, Darren, the mother. Before he was making Lady Swoon as 007, Daniel Craig was having wild, rampant sex with women nearly twice his age. Oh, I can't breathe. What would happen if you did breathe? Would you come to the spare room with me? Despite what you might be thinking, there's nothing funny or romantic about this character or actions. As Darren, Craig plays a handyman who, despite having a family of his own, has no problem filling in the frustrated desires of May, a middle-aged grandmother spiraling into depression. This may be one of Craig's coldest and most emotionally destructive characters yet. We'll have lunch, shall we? Shall we? Yeah. Number five, Tuvia Bilski, Defiance. Why is it so f***ing hard being friends with a Jew? Try being one. Standing out from many more stale historical period pieces, Defiance tells the story of a group of brothers who become unsung heroes of the Jewish people as they fought against persecution in Nazi-occupied Belarus. Halt! Who goes there? Lazar, I'm coming from camp. Danger's out there. 
Sorry, Tuvia. As the eldest of the Bilski brothers, Craig portrayed a survivalist forced to become a soldier with the lives of hundreds under his protection. Other things are important too. Such as? The community. A character filled with anger and sorrow over his losses, yet living for the sake of others, Craig deftly brings out the human aspects of this historic hero. Every day of freedom is like an act of faith. And if we should die, trying to live, then at least we die like human beings. Number four, Connor Rooney, Road to Perdition. He's in the building. You can end this now, you gotta take him now. In a film centered on the relationships between fathers and sons, there's bound to be a few bad apples lurking around. Why are you all smiling? Because it's all so fucking hysterical. Enter Daniel Craig with his portrayal of the emotionally unbalanced and reckless Connor Rooney, the son of an Irish mob boss who, over the course of the film, kills the family of a mob enforcer, played by Tom Hanks, out of jealousy for the relationship that Michael Sullivan Sr. has with his father. While despicable to the core, Craig manages to encompass both the villainous and the vulnerable sides of a son who becomes consumed by his own lack of self-worth. Where's my father? What the f is this? Why is no one talking to me? Hold on. I feel like a f***ing prisoner. I told you, you are not a prisoner. You are being protected. This is what your father wants. I can look after myself. Number three, Mikael Blomqvist, the girl with the dragon tattoo. I want you to help me catch a killer of women. Making an adaptation of Stieg Larsson's acclaimed novel was always going to be quite the endeavor. Luckily, Craig was up to the task of portraying Mikael Blomqvist, a journalist who goes to any lengths to expose corruption in the government in this Swedish-American mystery thriller. The last time I reported on something without being absolutely sure, I lost my life savings. As an individual who isn't afraid of putting himself at risk, Craig had to bring forward both the hunger and the drive of Blomqvist's character on the big screen. Her credibility isn't dead yet. Mine is. Of course, the highlight of his performance comes from the relationship with the sizzling and tortured Lisbeth Salander. Rape, torture, fire, animals, religion. Am I missing anything? The names. They're all biblical. Number two, unknown, layer cake. If Bond ever went bad and wanted to make a name for himself in the world of criminals, we're pretty sure he would come out something like this. Always remember that one day all this drug monkey business will be legal. They won't leave it to people like me. Not when they finally figure out how much money there is to be made. Not millions. Fucking billions. A kingpin in the cocaine business, Quadruplex is a man who has everything and is used to being on top. My name? If you knew that, you'd be as clever as me. That is, until a series of violent events make him realize that he's just part of the layer cake, and shit happens to everyone, except those on top. Welcome to the layer cake, son. Both a bastard and a gentleman, Craig ensures that this is one drug lord you'll be rooting for. I've got an idea. Why don't you come around for breakfast? I'll squeeze some orange juice and grind some coffee and we can talk about this like adults. How does that sound? Hmm? Sounds very hospitable. Do you know where I live? No. Well, f off then. Before we sizzle our way to our top performance, here are a few honorable mentions. I didn't let him down. What do you say? I, I, I don't believe in disposable language either. You know, small talk, little talk, chit chat, useless. The game, the game's something else though. What kind of stuff does Tennessee Williams write? I, I, I know his name, I just can't think what of his books. He's a dramatist, he wrote a streetcar named Desire. The Brando was in? The very same. Marlon Brando is the fucking king. Alex West. What are you doing here? Number one, James Bond, the James Bond franchise. The name's Bond, James Bond. The iconic super spy has had many actors wear his tuxedo. And when the torch was passed to Daniel Craig in the new millennium, he managed to make the character his own. Who doesn't appreciate the occasional twists, Mr. Bond, James Bond. In Casino Royale, he showed an earlier version of Bond that was only just getting used to his license to kill, and the consequences that came with it. You noticed. 
In Quantum of Solace, he played a man consumed by vengeance and coming to terms with loss. I asked you who you were working for. While in Skyfall, he portrayed a broken man who has to rebuild himself while facing the shadows of the past. Where the hell have you been? Enjoying death. 007 reporting for duty. Each time, Craig pulled it off perfectly. I told you what you wanted to know about Quantum. Yes, you did. And your friends would know that, so they're probably looking for you. Do you agree with our list? I don't know. Which Daniel Craig performance do you think is his best? Well, don't think too long, because someone's going to make a killing on these pills. For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. With pleasure.